Box 13. With the star of Paramount Pictures, Alan Ladd as Dan Holliday. Box 13. Box 13. Box 13. Box. The body lay like a squashed melon at the foot of the cliff. Period. Uh, period is right. Well, what happens now, Holiday? The inspector wonders how. The inspector wonders. Oh, no, it's Holiday who wonders. I wonder how. I wonder why. I wonder what. I wonder where you've been, Susie. But, Mr. Holliday, I've only been gone ten minutes. Went down to Star Times after the mail. Oh. Oh, so you did. What's new in Box 13? Box 13, starring Alan Ladd as Dan Holliday. And now, Box 13. 13, starring Alan Ladd as Dan Holliday. Well, this is quite a letter. Your ad, Adventure Wanted, will go any place, do anything, reads like a challenge. If it is, I dare you to go to Bay City Pier tonight and do what you will be told when you board the Ruthie J. The Ruthie J. Mr. Holliday. Uh, what's the matter, Susie? You wouldn't go on a boat, would you? Oh, well, why not? As a kid, I was a sea scout. Haven't been on a boat since, and I love them. But, Mr. Holliday, what if when you got on that boat, you were shanghaied? Susie, the word is shanghaied. Oh, shanghaied, shanghaied. What's the diff? Suppose some smuggler hits you over the head with a, a sloop or something, and... A and... sloop? Oh, Susie... Yes, a sloop. Uh, and then they sail off and dump you on the beach at Timbuktu. They couldn't sail off and dump me on the beach at Timbuktu. Why not? Timbuktu happens to be in the middle of the Sahara Desert. Oh. Yes, oh. And please tie an anchor to that imagination of yours. Okay, Mr. Holliday. But if you wind up on the other side of the world, please don't write me a letter about your voyage. No? No. Just reading about the ocean makes me seasick. <laughs> Well, Holiday, this is it. Take in a lung full of that fresh ocean breeze. Mmm. Smell that fresh salt air. And fish. Mmm. Not so fresh. Well, the letter said I was to board the Ruthie J. I wonder where she'll be. I wonder what she'll be. A schooner, trim and neat, 42-footer, 12-foot beam. Uh-oh. There's your dream boat. And brother, what a scow. Neat. Mm. Like a tub of dirty clothes in a mud puddle. Ahoy! Ahoy, mate! Hey, you over there. You calling me, Mac? Yeah. What's with this uh, ahoy mate stuff? You're a seafaring man, aren't you? <laughs> Don't let these tight pants fool you. And just because I'm standing on this sea jitney, don't make me no sailor boy. Oh, my mistake. Where's the skipper? The skipper? Hey, look, Mac, I told you I ain't no sailor. With me, you gotta talk English. Right, Gunzel. Dip that heater back under your wing and take me to the boss of this fish factory now. Ah, that's better. Now you're talking my language. Can I help you across the rail? Oh, thanks. Say, uh, is your name, uh, Holiday? Yeah, yeah. Dan Holiday? Now, how'd you guess? Pleased to meet you. <coughs> Sweet dreams, Holiday. I hope you enjoy the boat ride. Holiday. Oh, Holiday, you've been sleeping long enough. Better wake up and see what's making your bed roll around like this. Oh, my ache. 
head. Hey, what is this? Don't look now, Holiday, but Susie was right. You've been shang hoed You're out at sea. Well, and a pretty girl aboard. Hello, Mr. Holiday. I see you're up and around. Yeah, I'm up and my head's going around. <laughs> Bit of a blow, eh, Mr. Holiday? Uh, you mean the one on my skull or the one outside? Oh, I'm sorry about that sapping you took. Sometimes Manny leans a little heavy with that blackjack of his. Hmm. If he'd have leaned any heavier, he'd have driven me right through the deck. Uh, was it you who answered my ad for adventure? Does that surprise you? I uh, wouldn't have associated such a violent reception with a lady. You've embarked upon a real adventure. Uh, well, suppose I decide to sit this one out. You could go ashore. Mm -hmm. Now, which direction is ashore? Immediately astern. Oh, thanks. About 15 miles. Oh, well... In that case, I think I'll stay. Good. I didn't want you to decline my invitation. Uh, which explains Manny and his blackjack as a reception committee. Oh? Well, since you're in back of this, uh, just who are you? My name is Marie Gordon. I felt you might be in need of a vacation, Mr. Holiday. Oh, sort of a holiday for holiday. Is that it? Exactly. Well, great. Now, just where do we go on this uh, vacation? You go fishing with the captain. Oh, I go fishing with the captain. What about you, Miss Gordon? I remain locked in my cabin. I have things to think about. What about Manny and his convincer? He didn't sail. Other business kept him ashore. Mm. The uh, plot thickens. I fish with the captain while you stay locked in your cabin and Manny with his blackjack prowls ashore. Correct. And uh, speaking of plots, Mr. Holliday... I've always admired those in your books. Uh, perhaps you could confirm something for me. Mm, I could try. Establish the case of someone having something not his own, wishing to keep it from another person who desires it as well. Where would you put it? Well, in the place you'd least expect to find it, of course. Of course, Mr. Holliday. Good night. Uh, good night, Miss Gordon. Remember, the fish bite early. I know. Especially the suckers. There's a strong odor aboard this ship, and it isn't just fish. But there's nothing you can do tonight, Holiday, so you might as well get some sleep. Oh, a sailor's life is the very best life. So it's a sailor's life for me. A sailor's oh, life for... You're the captain? Yep. Morning, ship. Come through last night, squall okay? Uh, yeah, except for this bump on my noggin. Roll to get his tension, eh? Twelve a bit rough. Rough is right. Oh, um, I understand you and I are going to do some fishing. Aye, sir. These grounds is good for swordfish. Might even catch us a marlin. Uh, just where are we, Captain? Them islands way off there is the Catalinas. Plenty of albacore here, too. Doesn't Miss Gordon like to fish? Don't know, sir. This is the first time she's hired me in the Ruthie J. Then this isn't Miss Gordon's boat. Nope. She's mine. We're just chartered for this trip. How long are we provisioned for? Four or five days. Could put in at Avalon if you want to stay out longer. I didn't want to stay out this long. Not ready to go ashore so soon, are you, Mr. Holliday? A few days fishing is just what you need. What I need is to have my head examined. That bump still bothering you? No, but what might be happening back in town is... Relax, Mr. Holliday. Everything will be taken care of. Yeah, yeah. But I'm wondering how and what and why. Why is right. Just why would a girl like Marie Gordon maroon you on a fishing boat? What's the gag? And how is it going to be pulled and on whom? Holiday is an author. You're not even a good fisherman. You're quite a fisherman, Mr. Holiday. Why, in just four days, you handle that heavy gear like a real deep sea man. Thanks. But don't you think we've got enough fish? You've got another. There goes your line off the outrigging. It's a big one. Let him run, sir. Now, hit him hard. Good. You've got him, sir. Don't look now, but... But I think he's got me. He's a marlin, I think. Let him play. 
Don't let him go play with someone else. I'm tired. Oh, that's, that's too bad, Mr. Holliday. You set your drag too soon. That's why he broke the gear. I wanted to break the gear. I'm sick of fishing. Captain, I want to be put ashore now. Sorry, sir. Miss Gordon will have to give me new orders. Now, look, Captain, I'm going ashore. I'm going to be there before tonight. But, but Mr. Holliday... Captain, I... you heard the gentleman. He's going ashore. Aye, ma'am. Do we run for the mainland or the islands? Neither. We stay here. But you said Mr. Holliday was to go ashore. That's correct. Lower the dinghy, Captain. The dinghy? And hand Mr. Holliday the oars. The oars? Ma'am, we're more than ten miles off Catalina. If Mr. Holliday wishes to be ashore before tonight, he'd better start rowing now. Oh, you beautiful Box 13. If it hadn't have been for you, I wouldn't be out in the middle of the Pacific Ocean in a rowboat. You'd better rest on your oars a minute, Holiday. Because the wind is coming up, the bump on your head is swelling, the ache in your back is growing, and the blisters on your hands are spreading. Oh, when Susie mentioned the beach at Timbuktu, she knew what she was talking about. There's no ocean there. Hey, uh, Spaulding. You're looking for me? Oh. Oh, there you are, Manny. Yes, yes, I've been looking for you. Now, what does the great Edward B. Spaulding want with Quiet. me? Quiet. All right, will you? You should know better than to mention me by name. Get in that booth. Ah. <laughs> None of your penthouse-type clientele would be in a joint like this. Have a seat, Spaulding. I tell you, that doesn't matter. I, I just shouldn't be seen even talking. In that you. case, hit the road. I got to keep my rep, too. Meaning what? I'm a nice, honest hood. And even though you act and look like the owner of Tiffany's, to me, you're just a fence. Where's your boss, Marie? She's out fishing. Fishing? She couldn't be. Look, pretty boy. If her and this holiday want to do an fishing trip, it's their business, see? It's my business to get what I've paid for. The last shipment's overdue. Now, where is it? <laughs> you're sounding kind of tough for you. With the amount of money this deal involves, I can get tougher. Well, I don't know from nothing. You gotta talk to her. If Marie's trying to pull something... Hey, wait a minute. You mentioned a holiday. That wouldn't be Dan Holiday. Did I say, uh, holiday? Thought I said, uh, Hallahan. <laughs> or was it Halloween? All right, Manny, be a comedian. But tell your boss if she doesn't produce that merchandise by tomorrow, there'll be trouble. Ha, ha. <laughs> if I told her, she might die of fright. If she doesn't come through, somebody is going to die. And it won't be from fright. Well, Holiday, you finally made it. You were towed into Catalina, hocked your watch for a ticket, and flew right back to town. If this is adventure, you'd better stick with the more dangerous sports like croquet or something. <laughs> Susie. Oh, I forgot about Susie. She'll wonder what's happened. I'm four days late for lunch. She's not here. I guess she got hungry. She's not here, Holiday, but I am. Yeah, who are you? Get in that office. All right. All right. All right, now what's this all about? I want to know where you've been for four days. I, uh... Don't think I've had the pleasure. It may not prove to be a pleasure, if what I suspect is true. Now, where's Marie Gordon? Marie Gordon? From your expression of surprise, I gather you know what I'm talking about. Did you catch any fish, or was it larger game you were after? Not knowing who you are, I'm at a disadvantage. Disadvantage is even greater now. Now, do you talk, or do I shoot? Oh, do I have a choice? No. In that case, I'll talk. You are listening to Box 13, starring Alan Ladd as Dan Holliday. And now, back to Box 
13, starring Alan Ladd as Dan Holliday. Holliday, you can run into more trouble than a kid playing football with a beehive. You know, I don't think this guy's in the mood to believe you just got bopped on the bean and taken for a boat ride. He thinks you're in on the deal. Yeah, but what's the deal? Come on, Holiday, talk. Oh, I'd love to, but what do we talk about? About five minutes. And if by then you haven't told me where you and Marie have been instead of fishing, I'm going to pull this trigger. Now, believe me. I caught five tuna, ten albacore, four swordfish, and a pair of blistered hands. And that's no fish story. Hey, where are you going? Over here to turn up your radio. You see, I'm very considerate of others. This is a very big gun, makes a very big noise. I don't want to disturb the neighbors when it goes off. Okay, mister, whatever your name is. I'm going to tell you exactly what happened. And if you don't believe me, you can start shooting. You sound very brave, Holiday. And I act very dumb. Now, I know it was stupid of me to accept a blind invitation to visit a boat named the Ruthie J. Because when I got there, a tough character in tight pants used my head for a dinner gong. Somebody slugged you? Yeah. And I've got the bump to prove it. This character's name wouldn't begin with the letter M. As far as I'm concerned, it ended with A-N-N-Y. So it was Manny. Well, go on. Well, while I was unconscious, I was tucked Betty by in the cabin of the boat. And when I woke up, I was gazing into the lovely blue eyes of one Miss Marie Gordon, a woman I have never seen before in my life. Then I suppose you and this total stranger went fishing for four days. Now you took the words right out of my mouth. Well, find some more. And tell me you didn't ask any questions. That you were just brought back home with salt spray in your hair, a beautiful tan, and nothing else. I asked plenty of questions. To which I got plenty of no answers. And for your information, I wasn't brought back home. Oh? You, uh, swam? No, I rode. Ten miles all the way to Catalina. There I caught a plane, took a cab from the airport, and found you here waiting for me. That, brother, is my story. You, uh, you turned off the radio. What's the trouble? No gunplay? No gunplay. Uh, great, but why the change of heart? Holiday, I understand you're quite an author. But even you couldn't make up a story like that one. So, Holiday, you got rid of the mysterious man with a gun. Hey, but what about Susie? She's not here, she's not at home. The start times. They'll know what happened to her. Well, if it isn't Dan Holiday, have a nice vacation. Oh, wonderful, Jonesy. Hey, have you seen Susie? Not since the other morning. She came in with a wire, telling her to take a few days' vacation. Hey, who told her to take a vacation? Well, you did, of course. Don't you remember? Jonesy, sometimes my left hand just doesn't know what my right hand is writing. Where'd she go? She didn't say. She came in with a man wearing tight pants. She looked for the mail. There wasn't any, and they went away. Man with the tight pants. Manny, I'll see you later. Now, now, wait. All this mail came while you've been gone. And a box, too. Here. A box? Hmm, what could this be? Maybe candy. Oh, nobody loves me that much. Wait. What? You hear something tick in that box right now? T tick? You think it's... I think you better get that thing out of here. Oh, but Jones, yeah. Take I... the police headquarters. Get it out of the building fast. It might blow up any minute. <laughs> You've ridden in many a taxi cab holiday, but this is the first one you've taken with a maniac in the driver's seat and a bomb in the back. Inspector Blake, that's my man. You say this thing ticked? Yeah, it sounds like a clock in there. Well, come on, hurry. Where are we going? We've got a bomb shelter down in the basement. Oh, that's great, but why take the bomb with us? We're going to open that box. That's all I need. Been soaking for 30 minutes. We're safe now. Whew. Thanks, Inspector. Say, do you mind shoving my heart back into place for me? Now, there's nothing to worry about, my boy. We'll open up this beauty and see what we've got. Holy smoke. These are jewels, Holiday. Now, what made you think this was a time bomb? I have an aversion to anything that ticks. And I have an aversion, too. 
to people like you come in here talking about time bombs when all they've heard are some loose jewels clicking together. Well, I'm sorry, Inspector. Well, uh, I think I'll beat it. Just, just let me wrap up those stones. Oh, no, you don't. No, you don't. Those jewels stay here until you can prove ownership. Now, where'd you get them? To whom do they belong? Give me about 30 minutes, Inspector, and I think I'll be able to answer you. So that's what it was, Holiday. A stunt to smuggle jewels. Into box 13, no less. That Marie Gordon, she's a clever, clever girl. No wonder the mysterious character at the office was waving that gun at me. Oh, think of what would have happened if I'd tried to lie to him. Come on, Holiday, you've got places to go and some people to meet. I was sure worried about you rowing all that way, Mr. Holiday. Oh, that's okay, Captain. Hey, uh, what I came here for was to locate Miss uh, Gordon. Do you know where I can find her? She's a popular woman. Two other men come a-looking for her. Two men? Yep. One was a smooth-looking sort of fella. The other was a tough. With tight pants? That you mention it? Yes. He was here when we docked. Uh, what happened? Did you hear the conversation? Only that the tough one was to go right quick to a place called Rambler's Inn and wait. Uh, then the other man arrived? Yep. He seemed sore about something. They got in a car together and drove off. That's the last I see of them. Captain, you're terrific. When my blistered hands heal up, you and I are going back after the mile and it got away. All right, Matt. Where do you think you're drawing? Well, well, if it ain't Mr. Holiday again. Only this time, I don't think you were invited. Yeah, that's right. And this time, you're the one who's going Betty by. You fool. Pleasant dreams, Manny. Here. Just in case you get restless in your sleep, let me tie in bed with this bailing wire. I didn't have time to ask you in which cabin there were, Manny. But those angry voices I hear down the line, I don't think they would be coming from honeymooners. Marie, for the last time, where are those jewels? Don't threaten me, Spaulding. Manny's right outside. One call from me and he'd be all over you like a rug. I gave you the money to pay off the smugglers. I want the jewels. At first, the boys didn't want to turn over the stuff. When they finally did, I thought they might try to get it back. So you went off on a fishing trip with a man named Holiday. Why? Certainly. And for a good reason. Holiday has the jewelry. What? How did he get into this? You know about his ad in the Star Times? What about it? When I thought we might have trouble with the boys... I had to think of a place to put it where they wouldn't expect to find it. So? I sent it to Box 13. Where are you going? To pay another visit to Dan Holiday. Don't bother. What? I'm here. Holiday! Manny! Manny! I'm afraid Manny won't hear you. What? He's taking his nap. And you look sleepy, too. What? Say... Manny's blackjack works fine. Your friend Spaulding is sleeping like an infant. Now. Now, what? Now, what's this about my having that smuggled jewelry? You, uh, could share in it with me. Mm. You're very generous. I can afford to be. Duty-free and with Spaulding's wealthy clients. Oh. You decided to cut Spaulding in after all. Why should I? What do you mean? I'd rather cut you in, Mr. Holliday. No, thanks. I'm not interested. But that's foolish. Think of all that money. I am, but I'm also thinking of a great tag for the yarn I'm going to write. But what will that get you? Royalties, lady. Royalties. This is Box 13, starring Alan Ladd. As Dan Holiday. Well, Holiday, prepare yourself for an I told you so from Susie when she comes in. <laughs> 
Brother, wait till she finds out she was right about those smugglers and my being Shang Hold. Holiday. Uh, what is it, Inspector? Uh, we've been after that smuggling gang for a long time. If that Gordon dame hadn't gotten so greedy and tried to chisel on Spaulding, we wouldn't have caught up with him so soon. And, of course, uh, you helped a bit, too. Uh, coming from a police inspector, those are very kind words. Well, Susie, it's about time you showed up. Oh, hello, Mr. Holliday. My, what a beautiful tan. Catch any fish? All kinds. Tell me, Susie, where have you been? Out of town. The wire you sent me said to take a vacation for five or six days. Oh, the wire I sent, which I didn't send. Well, anyway, you didn't specify which, so, Mr. Holliday, I took six. I see. And, Mr. Holliday... Yes, Susie? Y you know the nice man that I went down to Box 13 with? Yes. Well, I told him how I warned you about t being taken by smugglers, and do you know what he said? No. What did he say? He said you were right about the smugglers. They wouldn't hit you on the head with a the sloop. They'd use a blackjack. Oh, fine. Next week, same time, Alan Ladd stars as Dan Holliday in Box 13. <laughs> Alan Ladd appears through the courtesy of Paramount Pictures and may currently be seen in Wild Harvest. Box 13 is directed by Ted Hedegar with original story by Frank Hart Tausig. The part of Susie is played by Sylvia Picker. Original music was composed and conducted by Rudy Schrager. This is a Mayfair production. <laughs>